Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Environmental Finance Center's Wastewater Treatment Works educational video series. My name is AJ, and I'm a research engineer with the Southwest Environmental Finance Center. Today's video will focus on math concepts that are useful when working with small systems, but can also be used for many different wastewater applications. The first thing we're going to talk about is temperature. Temperature is important for a variety of wastewater processes. For clarifiers, we typically have a temperature of 50 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and anything below this may slow the rate of sedimentation, and it may be necessary to increase detention times. For biological processes, it's important to have a temperature of over 55 degrees because biological activity decreases below this temperatures. So processes such as for a rotating biological contact actor can be negatively impacted below these temperatures. So the two formulas is we, that we can use is converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And what you do first is you multiply Celsius times nine fifths and you add 32 degrees. And then you can also convert back to Celsius from Fahrenheit by subtracting 32 degrees from Fahrenheit and multiplying by five ninths. Now this is important because sometimes you might get a temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit and have to be able to either understand it in the other one or report it as the other. We're gonna be practicing converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit in our sample problem. So a new instrumentation device is installed at a wastewater treatment plant that measures temperatures in Celsius. It observes that the temperature reads 20 degrees Celsius, but need to record the temperature in Fahrenheit. What is the temperature in Fahrenheit? So this is a straightforward problem, and all we need to do is plug in our 20 degrees Celsius into the formula to convert to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to start by writing out Fahrenheit is equal to, and I'm going to plug in my 20 degrees. So that's going to replace my C times 9 fifths plus 32. So 20 degrees times 9 fifths is equal to 36 degrees. And then we still add our 32. And that's equal to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty straightforward. And that 68 degrees falls in our normal operating range for both of the two examples that we provided. And so again, we just solve this in advance. And you can see that we did it the same way. We just plugged in the 20 degrees Celsius and you multiply it by the 9 fifths and you add 32. And so our 20 degrees Celsius is equal to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The next concept we're gonna be talking about is hydraulic loading rates. So this is important because this lets us know how much flow certain types of processes can handle. So for a standard trickling filter, this is typically between 25 and 100 gallons per day per square foot. For a rotating biological contactor or an RBC, this is typically 1.5 to 6 gallons per day per square foot. And the way we calculate this is we take the flow that is coming into the treatment process and divide it by the available surface area that's treating the process. And this gives us our hydraulic loading rate. And this is in the units of gallons per day per foot square. So let's go ahead and practice this with a problem. A treatment process has a flow of 1.75 MGD, and the surface area of treatment is provided by the manufacturer as 350,000 square feet. What type of treatment process is this most likely to be? This is another straightforward problem, and we're just going to take our hydraulic loading rate problem and plug in the givens. So we have 1.75 MGD, which is equal to 1,750,000 gallons per day. And we're going to abbreviate hydraulic loading rate to HLR and just plug in the numbers that we have. So we put in the flow at the top, 1,750,000 gallons per day over 300 50,000 feet squared. Now we could cancel out some of these zeros. And then we have 175 divided by 35. And this will be equal to 5 
and we keep our un units as gallons per day per feet squared. So as you can see, when we set up the problem beforehand, we did the same thing. We converted 1.75 MGD to 1,750,000 gallons per day. And same thing is equal to five gallons per day per foot square. Now, this falls in the range of our 1.5 to six gallons per day per square foot per RBCs. So this most likely would be an, a rotating biological contactor process. Okay, the next topic we're gonna to talk about is population loading. This is typically important for treatment processes like ponds, which have a limit to the amount of people that can be treated by the treatment process and the area that it has available. Typical design parameters for a pond are between 50 and 500 persons per acre. And this can be calculated by simply dividing the amount of population that's being served over the surface area of the available pond treatment. So let's go ahead and jump right into the question. And it reads, you are tasked with assessing a wastewater pond that is not meeting compliance requirements. It is noted that based on environmental conditions and the type of wastewater produced in the area, the pond is designed to treat wastewater for a maximum of 225 people per acre of surface area. You decide to evaluate the population loading to determine if the pond is sufficiently sized for the amount of people being serviced. The community's population is 6,500, and the pond is measured to have a width of 526 feet and a length of 1,421 feet. And we want to answer the question if the pond is adequately sized for the population being served. So the first thing we're going to do is identify our surface area. Surface area is equal to our length times our width. And these are given, so we have 526 feet times 1,421 feet. This is equal to 747,446 square feet. All right, so after we have our surface area in square feet, it's time to convert to acres. So we're going to take 700. 47,446 square feet. And we're going to convert that to acres by adding in the conversion factor and 43,560 43, square feet. So we divide 747,446 feet squared by 43,560. This gives us 17.16 acres. Now we take our population loading equation. I'm going to shorten it to pop load is equal to our population of 6,500 people divided by 17.16 acres. And this is equal to 378.8 people per acre. Now this is greater than the 225 that was sized for. So it shows us that the pumps are too small for the population that they are currently serving. And here, we just had solved it in advance, and this is another way to do it, is by just adding the conversion factor directly to the equation. So you can multiply 6,500 people times the conversion factor and divide it by the service area equation, and you get uh, approximately the same answer of 379 people per acre. So that's the end of our lesson today. I want to thank you for joining us. Um, and if you want to check out future videos on any topics relating to wastewater operations, you can go ahead and check out the Environmental Finance Center's YouTube channel. Have a great day.